Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar. My name is Caitlin Hennessy. I'm the program coordinator at Global Connections. Tonight you're here for Turn Your Passion into Action. We have Erin for the Center from the Center for Civic Engagement presenting this evening. If you have any questions at any time, please use the chat box and we'll address most of the questions at the end. And if you want to discuss the content or if you have any technical difficulties, please let us know and I'll do my best to help you. All right, thanks for coming and I'm gonna turn it over to Erin. All right, welcome. We have quite the group this evening. I'm pretty excited. Uh, as Caitlin mentioned, my name is Erin. I'm Erin McElrath and I work for the Center for Civic Engagement. Uh, I've been at my position here at the CCE for about six years now and I am the Marketing and Communications Coordinator. Um, some things that I am pr passionate about personally are animals, democratic engagement, and human rights. Uh, and some of the projects that I work on in the CCE are are, uh, promoting materials to global campus students, particularly events, activities, awards. Uh, and I also run the Poverty Awareness Week, uh, International Women's Day, uh, the Civic Engagement Week, the Coogs Vote Campaign, and a variety of other activities. Uh, so we work primarily with the Pullman and Global campuses, and we just started working with the Vancouver campus. Uh, so I hope that after this presentation, uh, we will get to work with all of you. Uh, so, let me get to my right slide here. Just a little bit about the CCE so you kind of understand what, where we're coming from when we talk about community involvement and community engagement. Uh, this is our kind of statement of purpose and it's civic engagement is central to the public purpose of higher education and essential to the student experience. Empowering students to become active citizens in a democratic society. The WSU CCE exists to forge community campus partnerships that build community capacity, generate knowledge, and solve problems through service, leadership, and scholarship. So one of the big things that we do is community engagement. Civic engagement is community engagement. They're basically synonyms. Uh, and that involves a variety of different things and I'll talk about some of the different activities that we offer for global campus students to get more involved uh, but primarily I'm going to focus on community service since that is a big part of what we do and that's a great way for you to be able to get involved in things that you're passionate about in your home communities. So uh, the first thing I would like to do is show you a video that we made a couple years ago and it is of some ASWSU global students as well as some students that we worked with, uh, some global students that we worked with talking about why they felt their experience with community engagement, primarily community service, was important for the global campus experience. Civic engagement is important for online students because it gives us the opportunity to get involved outside of the classroom. Something that WSU online students don't always get to do is get together face to face and so civic engagement allows us to do that and helps us build our resumes and makes us feel like we're a part of the WSU community. You know, I think civic engagement, it's really important for online students because there is a certain disconnect because we're not on a actual campus or a virtual campus. It's just a great way to connect with other students and more importantly, connect with our community as, an, as a Washington State student. So it was a requirement that I had for a class and I went out and did my service project and ended up just falling in love with it. It really brought the classroom out of the computer and I live it and it's just become such an important part of my life. I couldn't imagine not doing volunteer work and not helping out in my community without having this. Student engagement is important for online students because it gets us out of our chair in front of our computer screen and out into our communities and I think there's so many communities to be a part of. We have our online community but we also have our local communities and so it just gets us involved and helps make the world a better place. Civic engagement is important for online students because it gives them a sense of being a part of their community. You can reach out um, 
donate your time, Habitat for Humanity, maybe pulling some trash off the side of the road. I mean, it can be anything, but you're you're getting more of a sense of of accomplishment during your college experience. You're not on a physical campus since you're doing classes online, so it kind of gives you a way to better connect with other students as well. Civic engagement is really important for online students to really build a sense of community. It's a great way to meet other global campus students in your area, and it's a great way to give back to the community, to really build a well-rounded education and become a well-rounded student. You're an online student. You are focused on getting your classes done. Your, if you're full-time, uh, you know, worker, getting your work done. It's important that you reach out to people around you in your community. That you become involved with the things around you. You can only be as big as the things you leave behind for other people. As a mother, it's important to get your children involved. It's an, important to let them know to reach out to other people. It's just a great thing to leave something bigger and better than yourself behind for the future generations. Get out there, be a part of it. Don't be a wallflower in your house looking at the computer all day. <laughs> Get out there and be a part of the community. It's definitely worth the effort. Some of the things that the students in the video mentioned are that uh, it connected them with other students, it connected them with their local community. Um, community engagement helped build their resume and their professional portfolio. Uh, and the big one, making a difference and leaving a positive impact on your own community. Uh, there's other things too that they didn't mention that I'd like to just throw out there. Uh, we do work with a lot of courses to do service learning. So you do community service as part of the course. Uh, and that has been shown to help students make um, more deep and meaningful connections to that coursework because they actually are applying the coursework to the real world. Uh, it also helps you build leadership skills. Uh, it helps you um, connect with potential job opportunities. We've had a number of students who uh, volunteered in the community through our office and then were able to find some great jobs because of that. Uh, and it helps you kind of learn what's important to you and really connect internally to things that are valuable to yourself. Uh, so there's a lot of great reasons to do it. Uh, and I suspect you probably don't need too much convincing since you decided to come to this webinar. But I wanted to share that with you and share some words from your fellow Global Campus students so you could see where other students have benefited from this. Um, so some of the things aside from community service that our office off offers for global campus students, uh, part of community engagement uh, is civil discourse, public dialogue, talking about different issues with other people uh, in a calm and um, understanding manner. So one thing that we offer are public square events. Uh, they're about an hour long and students get a chance to have small group discussions. Uh, so we live stream that for global campus students and then anyone that's on that YouTube chat uh, acts as one of the small groups and then our moderator uh, shares out what the global campus students had to say with the larger group. We also have a number of awareness weeks and days to help raise awareness about issues that impact not only your local community, but your whole state and maybe the whole world. So we, we've um, recognized Poverty Awareness Week in fall. Uh, International Women's Day in spring is actually coming up just at the beginning of March. Uh, and then civic, civic Engagement Week in spring. And we offer a variety of different activities uh, for Global Campus students. Uh, we highlight projects that are available um, all around the country. Uh, and uh, for example, for International Women's Day, we'll be having a project where students can draw or write a way that a woman has empowered them or how they, as a woman, have felt empowered or empowered other people and then they're invited to take a picture with what they've written or drawn uh, and we'll post that on a Facebook album uh, that will be not only global campus students but students from Pullman as well. So it'll be a whole bunch of students thoughts on that to celebrate International Women's Day. We'll also be at, we go to Rendezvous and Rendezvous every year. So at Rendezvous we actually offer a 
in-person public square. So in addition to the live streamed ones where the students, uh, the global students get to participate with um, Pullman students in that discussion, we'll have a live one just for global campus students that day. Uh, we'll also have our annual uh, food supplies and teddy bear drive that goes to a local t Tacoma organization. And then we'll have our, in our info table um, like any of the other organizations that attend. Uh, and at that info table, we'll also offer that International Women's Day activity um, there as well. We also run the Coogs Vote campaign, which is how we help um, Pullman and Global Campus students um, get involved in democratic engagement. So learning more about politics, um, knowing when they should be voting, um, learning about different candidates, getting involved in different um, opportunities in the community to be more participatory in the political process. And then we have a number of awards. Uh, so we recognize monthly a student, uh, and it can be a student from any of our the campuses we work with for with the Community Involvement Award. Uh, so if you know someone or you are someone who has been particularly involved in your community, uh, you can be nominated for that. And then we also partner with Student Involvement to offer the President's Award for Leadership. Uh, and the deadline to nominate students is coming up on Monday, uh, but applications for students, so if you wanted to apply or you wanted to nominate a community organization, a faculty or staff member, um, or a student organization, that is all due on March 10th, so you have a little bit more time if you're interested in doing any of that. Those are the President's Awards for Leadership and it's lead.wsu.edu if you wanted to look that up. Of course, no problem, Kara. So on to the meat of the presentation, community involvement. And, I mean, community service, sorry. Uh, so community service, we have daily projects listed all over the um, all over the state and all over the nation. Uh, we offer special projects in December called holiday giving projects where we print off little certificates for something that uh, you've chosen to do in your community and then you can give that service as a gift to someone else. Uh, and then we celebrate four national days of service. So those are kind of the big pieces that we do. Uh, and I wanted to get into how you can not only participate in those, but then participate in uh, community service anytime you want. So we have a lot of resources, uh, but I know that we, so many global campus students are on like the west side of Washington State and Oregon uh, that we don't have projects available everywhere. So I'm going to talk about how you can look up projects through our systems, but then also projects through other systems so that you can access community service and look through different opportunities so that you can turn your passion into action no matter where you're living. So if you head to our website and it's just cce.wsu.edu backslash map, I made that super easy to find. Uh, you will find our community partner map. And Caitlin, if you want to click on the expand to the right, upper right of the map, that'll take you. I'm sorry, did I say the wrong direction? I have a problem with that. <laughs> she figured it out. Uh, so this is, if you could uh, zoom out for us, uh, this, these are all of the community partners that we are partnered with right now worldwide. So we have uh, partners all across the US and also across the world, uh, which is pretty exciting. Uh, Caitlin, if you could click the search icon in the upper left, and we have a Seattle light here, so let's type Seattle. And then you can click on the Seattle WA in blue. And so this is an example of how you can search. So you can click on that little search icon, um, zoom into your specific area and see what's available. Uh, Caitlin, if you could click the little arrow out on the left. So this will take us right back to all of the different types of organizations. Uh, I know there's a ton, I agree. <laughs> Surprise face from me too. Uh, 
Uh, so we have all different types and you can see that they're color co coordinated. So uh, the yellow are for children, green for environment, and you can click off the little red check marks to select so that you have, you know, I am only interested in education or I'm interested in education and children or I'm interested in, you know, environment and the arts, whichever you want to see and you can click off so that you just see those. Uh, and Caitlin, if you would click on any one of the markers that you would like so I can, uh, so you can see, uh, what, when you click on any of these markers, it'll give you the name of the organization, their contact information and website, uh, and it will tell you what type of agreement they have with us. So all of, all of the organizations that are listed on this map, as well as on KookSync, um, have signed an affiliation agreement with us, which means that they have agreed not to engage in any discriminatory practices against you or anyone else. And they've also agreed not to put you in any particular danger. So nothing extremely dangerous. Uh, so that is one benefit to working with partners that we're already um, have this agreement with is that um, there is that level of agreement that they will keep you safe and that they will not be discriminatory towards you or towards other people. Uh, and there's two kinds. So if it says that there is a portal, uh, that means that when you go on KookSync, you're going to be able to find them there as well. And you'll be able to find opportunities listed. So you can see the specific opportunities that they have available. Um, if it says that there is only an affiliation agreement, um, that means they're not going to have anything listed on KookSync, but you can still partner with them, no problem. You're just going to have to go to their website or call them to see what is available. And the only way you're going to be able to find that information is through this map. Um, but if you go down a little bit more, it'll tell you exactly where they're located as well. So you can you could use this map to go straight to setting up your own project. You can use it to narrow down uh, by what kind of what area you want to look in, what type of projects you're interested in, uh, and then you can click through their website or send them an email to tell them that you're interested. Uh, make sure to tell them that you're a WSU student so that they can um, make sure to record that with us. Uh, you'll also want to download a um, record of civic engagement form, which is available on our website as well as our portals on uh, KookSync. Uh, and then you can just bring that with. It's just you fill it out, you write your name, um, the hours that you worked, where you worked with, and then they sign off from it. So it's a fairly easy form. And then you can actually take a picture of it and email it to us, or you can scan it and email it to us. Um, and either of those is fine. Um, it can be difficult to find a fax machine in 2017. Uh, so we're very happy to get just a photo of your form sent to us uh, via email. So any questions on this map before I move on? So you can search any city. You're going to find the most places on the west side of Washington uh, as well as in the Pullman area. In Global Campus KookSync, uh, as well as in the general WSU KookSync, uh, we have a Center for Civic Engagement portal. So you can search for that, uh, and then you have the option to join these. Um, I believe you're actually added into the Center for Civic Engagement online. Uh, so you should be able to go up to My Memberships on that top crimson bar, uh, and then it will drop down and you can just select um, the Center for Civic Engagement one to access this. And Caitlin, if you could scroll down a little on the page, the video is there if you would like to watch it a second time because you were so excited. <laughs> uh, but then the easiest way to access service opportunities is to come right here and click the service opportunities button. Uh, you can also download the record of civic engagement form right from there. There's a button for that as well. So now we have all of these lovely projects. Um, in the ways that you can search for projects, uh, there's, a, there's kind of two ways. Uh, you can search under service opportunities, or if there's a specific partner or topic that you'd like to search for, you can click there. I'll, uh, although I only recommend that if you kind of have a really specific idea of what you're looking for, uh, because it's not quite as versatile. Uh, for service opportunities, uh, on that tab, you're able to type in a location, so a city and a topic that you're interested in at the same time to narrow down a search where you can't do that with the partners tab. You can only do one or the other. So you could search for Seattle on the partners tab, 
and it would come up with all the partners or you could start search for homeless on the partner tab and it would come up with all of those so you, but you couldn't do them at the same time so so you can see all of those but it's not quite as versatile for searching so i do recommend the map if you're looking for partners that way if you're just kind of looking for opportunities in your area in general and you're not um, looking to partner with a specific organization or you don't want to narrow it down to like one or two organizations that service opportunity tab is a great way to start uh, so caitlin could you first click off ongoing on the right of the screen so ongoing projects are typically going to be more like internships or for like a six month or a year long where you come in regularly so if you want a project like that do not click that off click off the other two but if you're looking for an opportunity that maybe you only want to go like once a month or just once and you're or you're looking for a specific event then you're going to want that one time and repeating opportunities on one time means it's like it's like there's a habitat for humanity build it's happening one day so they put that event on there repeating means that they're individual projects that keep happening so it might be like a food pantry every once a month every wednesday they have people come to help distribute food um, and you can come to one or you can come to ten it's up to you um, but that's what the repeating versus the one time means uh, and then the ongoing of course is a much more long-term placement so Caitlin, could you search for me? Let's do, I have a number, but because uh, I want to make this a little easier, can you search Portland and homeless for me? And you don't have to put commas or anything, just, yep, perfect. So this is a good example of what will happen. You've got your uh, topic that you're interested in as well as your city uh, and you've clicked off the ongoing so you're only looking at ones where you could do one or two at a time and you see that we've got the operation night watch their hospitality centers come up and um, these are actually really cool project if you're kind of in that area they um they offer they do some um uh they do some food distribution, but they also do you know some socialization and offering um some uh shelter and things like that. So it's a really nice, cool program. Uh, Caitlin, could you now look up just Vancouver and then in the date, March 17th? I'm sorry, you'll want to go over to, oh, that worked anyways, cool. <laughs> But you can also, in the next box over, select any date. So let's say you wanted to, you're like, okay, two Saturdays from now I really want to do something. Or, you know, I'm free on Mondays and I really want to do something. So I'm really excited to see that searching for a specific date also works. Um, but you can just select the date. Uh, and so the project that I'm going to use the example is that Shamrock Fitness Project. So if you could click on that and then click on it the title one more time so basically this is like a preview so you can kind of take a quick look but if you click on it twice then you'll go into the project so up at the top it'll tell you what the title is uh, it'll tell you what the date is so this one has two options there's a friday option as well as a saturday option um, and then they have uh, and when you go down the organization background so it talks about what does this organization do exactly what are you getting involved with um, so then you can say oh yeah this is definitely the kind of organization that I want to support and I want to be part of that uh, it talks a little bit about the opportunity description so you can tell yeah this is something that I'm interested in doing uh, and then because this one has some shift options it'll then list that so it has two shifts on Friday two shifts on Saturday and therefore doing a tabling for uh, this organization. If you scroll up a little bit, Caitlin, you can actually see what organization it's listed under. So this is the Trillium Family Services and they do some mental health awareness work. Uh, then if you could scroll back down, sorry about that, I should have done that one first, but I didn't. Uh, then it will tell you, you know, what kind of requirements there are. Uh, so some or some organizations might need you to do an orientation or fill out a specific volunteer form or something like that uh, this one you need to be okay with signing a confidentiality form and a liability form 
uh, and you'll want to bring your record of civic engagement so that we can record that uh, and you'll need to contact them uh, in order to sign up. So you have the requirements and the signing up to tell you exactly what you would need to do beforehand and what you need to do to sign up. Uh, and so it says that you sign up here, and this is so that we can record it. Uh, the reason that we like to record it is because then we can report that as part of the whole university strategic plan. Um, service to society and civic engagement actually features in the strategic plan. So if you sign up on Coog's sake, or help us to partner with the organization you're interested in, then we can add that number and say Global Campus students did X amount of community service. So we really, really want to. Um, yes, alumni can definitely use this to search, although it might be easier for you to use the two that I'll talk about next. Um, so then you'll want to follow the sign up instructions, which says sign up here, and then contact that individual to sign up. Um, I do recommend, if you're comfortable with it, calling them first, uh, because not only are people signing up through KoogSync, but they'll have community members signing up elsewhere as well. So they might have tabling events where people can sign up for these projects. So if you call and say, hey, I'm interested, what do you have available, uh, then, uh, then we can um, make sure that you have that available before you send that email before you sign up. Uh, so I do recommend calling to make sure that the shift that you're interested in is available. Uh, any questions about the KoogSync search? Hey Erin, there is one question about how staff volunteering can be counted. Yes, I see that. So you know, we don't actually count staff volunteering at this time. I don't believe any of our campuses do. Um, but I'm going to write that down and I'm going to ask our director because that is actually really important and would definitely uh, be an important part of the university's strategic plan. Um, so I'm writing that down too. Yeah, faculty too. I'm going to write that down. That is something I have not thought of, so that was actually super helpful for us. Thank you. All right, so could you switch over to volunteer match? The volunteerist, matchiest of. <laughs> So this will be really great for our California and Arizona red residents. Uh, and I also have a second one. It's called All for Good. It's, and it's all just one one, allforgood.org. Uh, so these two sites are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful for finding service projects in your area. And you can use them for Seattle and Pullman as well. Um, they might have the same stuff listed. They might have different stuff listed. Uh, in the Pullman area, we've pretty much partnered with everyone. So there's probably a good chance that we'll have that. Um, but in Seattle, you saw how, how many organizations there were simply because of the population. There's probably 100, 200 more in that area alone that we're not already partnered with. So you might find them this way instead. Uh, one thing that's really nice about these that KoogSync doesn't offer is you can actually select to search for projects that um, are accessible for children. So if you wanted to go do a service project with your family using either of these sites, if you, uh, and Caitlin, if you could go to either one of them and click the more options um, or the advanced search on volunteermatch.org. So you simply put in your location and you can select, you know, I want it 10 miles, 20 miles, 100 miles. Uh, if there's a specific organization you already know you're interested in, you can select that. Any keywords. Uh, and then great for kids, um, great for teens. So they've kind of divided that out. Uh, and search and it'll show all kinds of options for you. Uh, and then when you look at these options, if there is a, so you see that on the little calendar, it says that they're flexible for most of these. That means uh, that you call them or email them and say, hey, I'm interested in this project. Can I do it on Saturday, the February 25th? Can I do it on March 1st? Um, I'm available in the afternoon. I'm available at 8 a.m. So those flexible ones means that it could be anytime. You just have to contact them and set up a time with them. 
uh, and you can you can um, sort these by not only location uh, but by issue area um, by how far away they are and then uh, on the volunteermatch.org for major cities they also have a calendar option so you can look for like those one-time events uh, so like you could go to Chicago, Illinois or something. And it'll say, OK, we have these that are for specific days. So that would be the kind of thing uh, with like that Shamrock event that was listed on KubeSync where it's a specific day. Those would also show up in this general search as well. Uh, so both of those work very similarly. They'll have some overlap, but it kind of depends what the organization likes. I would recommend just searching both of them since they have the same kind of um, opportunities for clicking on uh, selecting children uh, as part of your project and saying I, I'm interested in this kind of thing. Uh, so then you'll be able to see kind of a full array of options for that. Uh, and just one side note, the virtual opportunities is a really neat thing that we don't talk about enough, I don't think. Uh, plenty of nonprofits need help with websites, with social media, with developing materials. Um, so that, you know, with um, accounting management and things like that. Uh, and I remember someone said that they were interested in economics with a focus on the community. Uh, so you're going to find stuff like that in this these virtual opportunities that you can do from home as a global campus student helping that community organization that could be your home community, it could be you know 100 miles away, it could be in another continent. Uh, so that's a really cool opportunity as well and you can select things like economics or marketing or in addition to animals, human service, things like that. So these two sources are really great places to look as well. Um, if you would like to help us track this information, because we would really love to, uh, when you find an organization, you can just bring our form with you. Uh, and then from that KoogSync page uh, that Caitlin showed you, there's just another button that says Community Partner Request. And all you need to input is just your contact information so we can let you know when they have registered with us and signed your affiliation agreement and their their contact information so what the partner's name is if you have a specific person and then their basic contact information it's a really simple easy form uh, and then that will help us record all of the awesome stuff that global campus students do in the community as well as um, get another partner out there for students that might be in your area one thing that we've been working on quite a bit this last semester related to the presidential elections is improving our opportunities for democratic engagement. So things like getting involved in town halls, getting involved in canvassing, you know, learning more about politics in general, knowing the basics of um, voter registration and what your rights are, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we've put a lot of information together specifically related to the presidential elections. I'm working on updating um, this web page now for just general use. Um, it focuses primarily on Washington students since the vast majority of global students are from uh, Washington State. Um, but we do also have a number of resources that are just general resources for students where it's like a student voter guide and you click on it and then you click on whichever state you're from and it'll talk about deadlines and information about how to vote so that you can share that information or use it yourself. Uh, especially useful for students who are in the army and moving around or students whose spouses are and they're moving around uh, because it'll have information about voting overseas, it'll have information about all those different states to make it easy for students to access that. Uh, we're also, and this is coming soon to a website near you, working on a de democratic engagement how-to basics guide uh, because what we hear a lot from students uh, both at Pullman and Global Campus is that getting involved um, in the political process can be really overwhelming uh, you know there's all kinds of different ways that you can do it um, from voting to activism to running for political office yourself so to try and make this a little bit less uh, overwhelming and help students think through what's going to work for them and what they're most interested in working on. Uh, we're putting together this guide and here are a couple basics from that. 
vote in all elections. So for example, Washington just had a special election on Valentine's Day, the most romantic of election days. Uh, and voting in those special elections can be, your, your voice has so much more power because so few people vote in them. So all of a sudden, what you have to say matters just so much more because not enough people are voting in them. Not to mention a lot of times those special elections and midterm elections are voting on things that are specific to your community. So funding buildings, funding education, you know, which roads need attention. So you're voting on these things that are impacting your life directly in your community. And then we say pick a couple issues that are of most interest to you and focus your efforts on that. So if you're interested in human rights or animal rights, or you're interested in, uh, you know, so many things, immigration or, you know, whichever things you're interested in, pick a couple so that you can focus your energy and interest. Make sure that you're educating yourself, reading books, taking trainings when they're available. Read articles from both parties, which can be really hard for anyone, you know, young or old, to read opinions that you don't agree with. Um, but it'll help you get a more well-rounded view of the system. Uh, list your talents and consider how they can be applied to your issues. So someone might be really interested in, you know, activism and advocacy, but they're really nervous speaking in front of people and being in large groups, but maybe they're a great artist and then that person can use their art uh, to help further that goal and what's important to them. Create your own action plan. So, you know, what are you going to do for the next year? What are you going to do this week? What are you going to do in a month? What are you going to do in six months? What are you going to do in a year? Uh, and then the very last thing, take time for self-care. So uh, on the Pullman campus, we've seen a lot of students really stressed out uh, the last couple weeks uh, because there's been so much political activism and things changing. Uh, so it's important to take time to take care of yourself. Uh, and make sure that you are, you know, logging out when you need to of information. You know, if, if it soothes you to, you know, take a walk or take a bath or just spend time with a friend or a loved one, it's really important to do that because a burnt out citizen is not a very good engaged citizen. And so there'll be more coming to that website. So I hope that you will visit it. Any questions about that? All right. Well, you've all been very lovely, and I'm going to be here for questions. Uh, and here's some different ways that you can connect with my office. So uh, our official global campus page is CCE. I'm going to type it in here, cce.wcu.edu backslash global. And that is like specific to global campus students. Uh, and then we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube accounts. YouTube is where we uh, have our live streams for global campus students. Uh, so that's a great one specifically for global students, although I would love it if you followed us on all of them. <laughs> uh, they're all backslash WCCCE to make it easy for you to find. Uh, and then the KoogSync, uh, kooksync.wsu.edu is the direct short link for it. Uh, and then the service opportunities is thus. And then anyone that's going to be in the Tacoma Rendezvous, we are excited to see you there. Uh, we continue to uh, answering uh, Kara's question, are you going to be expanding the CCE to other areas in the future or still focus on the Pacific Northwest area primarily? Uh, we are we go wherever the global campus students are. So uh, it's they are primarily in the Pacific Northwest, but if a whole bunch of students from, you know, started living in another area or all joined from that area, we would be there. And that's where we would be working to build um, partnerships there as well. Uh, so it, it just kind of depends where the students are. We expand to wherever they are. So you'll see like a couple in Hawaii. There's, uh, we have a student in Sweden right now. So it's kind of wherever the students are, that's where we're working on getting partners for them. Erin, do you have tips on um, how to 
use volunteer work to improve your resume? Let's say if you were out of work for a little while or to show your strengths? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so volunteer work, one thing that I, we've noticed is, is that um, over the past couple of years, maybe the past decade or so, uh, employers have been looking more and more for more well-rounded resumes. So they're looking for people that have uh, volunteer experience, that have been part of clubs and things like that, in addition to school uh, and in addition to work experience. So while work experience and school are really important, getting involved outside of that um, helps them see that you are well-rounded. Uh, additionally, you can look for opportunities that are in your interest area and skill area so that you can list those and talk about those skills. Uh, so if you're, for example, into you're, you're planning to go into marketing, you've been out of work for a while, you're doing your communications degree, you know, getting uh, Getting, working on a project with a community organization that involves marketing, you know, maybe it's graphic design or maybe it's writing their press releases, um, maybe it's talking to the press for them, you know, doing something like that uh, can be a supplement to that work experience to show that you're still on your game, you still have that experience, you still have those skills, and you can list all of that with that experience. And Kara, yes, we do. Any of students that are in um, in any of our service learning courses, we get information about where they are located so that we can make sure to help them specifically. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. And if you do have any more questions for Erin, please put those in the chat box now. Our next Global Connections event will be on Tuesday, February 21st at 7 p.m and is on Childhood Nutrition with Dr. Shelley McGuire, and she'll go over nutrition requirements and recommendations from infancy all the way to um, teens, as well as address some common issues like picky eaters, um, organic versus inorganic, things like that. And you can register for that event at connections.wsu.edu. And I just dropped a survey in the chat box. I'd appreciate if everyone could fill that out and let us know what you thought of tonight's program and what you'd like to see in the future. We did just receive another question that asks, asks in your experience, do you find that large employers like WSU or small employers like a small business are more, are more so looking for volunteer experiences? Um, I would say that in my experience, it's it's kind of a mix, um, and it a lot of times depends on kind of the values and goals of that company. Uh, so when you see like huge companies like um, Google or Microsoft, they're really interested in um, kind of that community engagement and you know just helping make the world a better place. So they value that a lot. Uh, but you're going to find other businesses that don't or you're going to find some you know like in WSU uh, you'll find things like the Women's Resource Center the CCE or the Foley Institute um, that or student involvement that that community involvement would be really valuable um, in other places won't so it's really a mixed bag I think looking at um, what the for the job that you're applying what does the organization and then if you're doing something like a university, what's the department value? And then you can kind of tailor, do you include that kind of experience or not in your resume? Because uh, you can kind of tell from their value statements uh, if this is something that they are really looking for. <laughs>